Well, good morning, everybody. It's April 6th. It's Monday. Happy Monday. And um, I hope that uh, you guys had a great break. Father, thank you for this good day that you've given to us. And pray, God, that um, you bless this video and make it easy for these guys to understand. And Mia, you need to keep your eyes closed. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so you guys did awesome on your quizzes. There is uh, one problem you guys had in number eight. Most of you got number eight wrong. And it was independent probability, so we're going to review that a little bit today. So I want to do simple probability first. You guys did great on this stuff. When I said the probability of a red or a green, see, you only make one spin. So chance to get a red or a green, one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six chances out of eight, which is three quarters. You guys did awesome. Probably of not getting red. Um, one, two, there's only three that are not red, so you'd have three chances out of eight not to get a red. Probably getting a yellow, or there aren't any yellow, and so the answer would just be zero out of eight, which equals zero. This you did awesome on, but I want you to see this to compare it with up here. Now, independent probability, if you see that, that means there's two or more spins that are going on. Okay, and so, my dog's barking, sorry about that. Um, probably getting a red would be one, two, three, four, five. So this would equal five over eight times, then we want a green, well there's only one green, one out of eight, and if we multiply those together, we get five over 64. And that's what you guys weren't doing, you weren't multiplying. So it's not a very good chance to get a red and then a good green. It's that's pretty tough um, odds there. Okay, so the next one down here, let's see what's the probably getting a blue, a blue, and then getting a blue again. Well, getting a blue the first time is two out of eight, which I'm gonna reduce to one fourth because it makes it easier. And then to get a blue the second time I spin is still two out of eight, which is one out of four. And chance to get a blue again the third time is still two out of eight, which is one out of four. And if you multiply that together, you get one out of, four times four is 16, times four is 64. So that would be even harder to do, is to try to get three, spin three blues in a row. On the last one, probability of getting a green would be one chance out of eight, times the chance to get a blue would be two out of eight, which remember reduces to one fourth, makes it easier if I do it right in the beginning, times, um, chance to get a, um, a yellow. There are no yellows, so that would be zero out of eight. And whenever you multiply anything by zero, anywhere is in there, it's going to give you zero for an answer. So it's impossible to do this, which makes sense because there's no yellow on the spinner. Okay, now um, we're going to go to this. You guys did really well on this, but I want to do one that was a little bit um, tougher for you guys. Um, the chance that it's going to hit the shaded, we're always trying to hit the shaded part with our dart. And so it would be the rectangle minus where the circle is at. So if I did the area for the rectangle, it would be 8 times 12, which equals 96. And that would be centimeters squared. Not so worry about that. For the circle, remember that's A equals pi times R squared. And so I'd have to do A equals 3.14 times the radius. If this is 8, then that means the diameter of the circle is 8, which means that the radius, this part, would be 4. So when I went 4 times 4, that would give me 16. And this would give you about 50. 50.28 if I remember right. Okay, so if we want to know the odds that it's going to hit the shaded part, what I need to do is I need to subtract these two numbers. 96 minus, I'm just going to say 50 and round it off. So 96 minus 50 would be 46 over the whole area of the whole rectangle, which was 96. And that would reduce to 23 out of, <clears throat> if I'm dividing by 2 on both of these, out of 48. And that would be your odds. And you can change that to a percent if you want to. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little work in the back of the book that's review today. Um, a little bit of independent probability and a little bit of this. And I hope it goes well for you. I will take a picture of the answers for you and send that out to you 
later after you've had a chance to work for a bit. Hope you have a great Monday. Thanks.